Hello and welcome back and today I want to compare the old versus the new. I know it's not the first time I've done that but I do think in this case it's going to be quite interesting. Today I want to look at an old and a new QNAP NAS and I really do mean old. I am talking about a 2015 release TS451 plus a very very popular NAS not just when it came out but weirdly, even now into 2020, the 451 Plus is still a popular NAS. It's still available and weirdly finds an obscure price point um, in terms of quad-core Intel architecture, a uh, price point that people just love. It was a very popular device and still is, even now, what I think is towards the end of its shelf life. And I'm comparing it against what I believe to be its spiritual successor, namely the TS451D2. Now, both of these devices, despite having nearly five years of release difference between them, um, are actually really, really similar in their architecture. You do notice with a lot of these NAS brands, and QNAP is just the same as anyone else on this, that their portfolios all evolve at the same speed. They don't just go, whoop, better CPUs have come out, and they overwrite. They don't. They all they try to maintain the product portfolio and family line and the difference between each of them in terms of price point and architecture very, very, very well. And in the same way, the 451D2 lives between the likes of the uh, 251D and the two, uh, 453D between it. The 451 Plus, when it came out, was still sandwiched between two NASs, between a two-bay dual-core and a four-bay quad-core powerhouse known at that point as the 453A. Personally, one of my favourite NASs of all time. But, between these two devices, if you do see them online, whether you're looking at this now, or the date of publication, I'm recording this in October 2020, um, regardless of when you watch this, it could be that the 451 Plus has appeared on a Black Friday, or a Prime Day sale, or a Christmas sale, or something on eBay, knocking around second hand. Regardless, it can be very, very desirable when you look at those specs. It's an Intel quad core, it's got a couple of gig of memory, it's got HDMI out, it's got a couple of LAN, it's a good one. Why on earth would you pay over the odds for this new one? Because the price between them is only about a tenner right now. The 451 Plus retails for about 450 to 450 quid. The 451D from QNAP retails for about 430 to about 450 tops you shop around and that's looking at both of them with two gig of memory there are other memory configurations indeed of both of them floating around all the way up to eight gig <clears throat> but between these two what is interesting is despite the very similar architecture you can see how the years have played on what's considered the default norm before we go any further into hardware though let's talk about the software they're both arrived with support of QNAP's QUTS or QTS, whatever you, whatever you want to call it these days, uh, platform. Let, latest version, I believe, 4.4.3. Um, both of them arrive with great support of multi-tiered backups, uh, virtualization, surveillance. Um, they both arrive with great support of photo, videos, and music with multiple application support in each platform, from AI photo recognition to uh, 4K and 1080p transcoding, although I would argue there is an issue over 4K that we're going to touch on later on. Both of them are very petite, low-impact 4-bay NAS. It's incredibly similar in design. As you can see, I don't even have the 451 Plus here with me in the studio. Um, but we've talked about it loads on the channel. We know the thing inside and out. Um, they've both got very similar chassis, uh, almost identically in look, although it is a kind of black, two-tone black on the 451D2, a charcoal and uh, black gloss, whereas the 451 Plus is grey overall. Still got that two-tone thing going on of matte versus shiny, but it's grey overall, so grey versus black. Um, and both of them arrive with that support for client applications for iOS and Android, as well as client applications for desktop and laptop systems. So you, again, you're talking OS X and Windows and Android uh, uh, desktop systems as well. Uh, they've both got access to that GUI graphical user interface via your web browser. They've both got loads of applications installed inside, not just the first party ones that I alluded to, but also third party ones like Plex Media Server, Nakivo, and um, MB Twonky. All of those different applications all can be supported by these devices. They both support the very latest applications from QNAP in the form um, of QDDupe to a degree, it should be said, but power wise these are not ideal for that uh hybrid backup sync 3 
uh, for that multi-tiered backup solution that we just alluded to there. On top of that, virtual JBOD hybrid backup, box safe, all of them are supported by these devices. What I'm saying is, regardless of which one of these two you buy, you're getting a very, very good NAS with some long-term power inside. But they're not the same. They're very similar at a glance, but when you look at the architecture of those components, it's very, very different. And even though they're the same price, it's about value, not cost. So first, let's look at the CPU. They both feature an Intel Celeron, but very, very different architecture. The 451 Plus arrives with a J1900 Celeron processor. It's a 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.4. And it is a four core processor with embedded graphics that support up to 1080p, technically not 4K. The 451D arrives with an Intel Celeron as well and just a dual core rather than a quad. But that CPU is 2.0 gigahertz that can be supported up to 2.9 gigahertz on burst with a higher uh, embedded graphics at UHD 600. It supports 1080p and 4K media transcoding and handling there. Very, very important. It means you're going to use less of your CPU resources to play back and alter and shift multimedia while you're enjoying it. Sorry, I had to cut there. I'm getting about a million notifications over there. So, although they're very, very similar, at a glance, you can see that the difference between those CPUs is more about age. If you go to CPU benchmark, then J1900 rates about nowadays at about just over a thousand. I think it's 1114, 15, something like that. And again, the CPU benchmark, when they measure CPUs, they do stay. Uh, they don't just keep that number indefinitely. It is scaled against modern architecture and things do change. So right now, although that CPU might have ranked higher in the past, it's rated at about 1100, whereas the J4025 for that dual core in this new NAS rates at about 1900 right now. So a big, big distinction, nearly twice that on the new one in terms of output efficiency and abilities. Now, they both arrive with the support of great memory, which is good, but with DDR3 or DDR3L memory at 1,866 megahertz at 2 gig on the older generation that can be upgraded to 8 gig, the newer generation arrives with 2 gig, sure, but it's DDR4 at 2,400 megahertz, a higher frequency speed there, which can, again, go up to 8 gig. And although both of them support AES and I encryption, they've both got a great floating point. There is no avoiding it. That, that CPU can do so, so, so much more in terms of file handling, in terms of multimedia handling, and the, uh, the memory it does support. And you will feel that impact. Ultimately, it means, although they can both do the same things technically, the newer device will use less power doing them, ergo, uh, you've got more resources at your disposal to do more things. So ultimately, a much, much higher glass ceiling in terms of capabilities. Now, in terms of architecture and design, although they're incredibly similar at the look of things, the ports and connections, again, there are similarities and there's differences. So hopefully we've got a graphic there at the rear of this one. Um, the newer device arrives again with two one GPU LAN ports. It's got four USB total, one on the front, three on the back, and it's got an HDMI output. Does that sound familiar? That's probably because it's nearly identical to the graphic you're probably seeing on screen for the 451 Plus. The 451 Plus arrives with three USB, um, sorry, a two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports, so four total, but two of them are USB 2. On top of that, the device arrives with two 1GBE ports, which is great to hear, that's lovely to see, but still, it's this idea of 1GBE still being around for five years, that's really, really annoying. Um, and finally, they've both got HDMI out, but HDMI 1.4B, and this is HDMI 2.0, which means 1080p at 60 frames per second, and 4K output at 30 frames per second, but remember, that CPU is not going to handle 4K very well at all, or maybe not at all. The newer generation arrives with 1080p at 60 frames and a 4K at 60 frames, and a CPU that can take care of that. Very, very different, very, very important. And again, it's about value, not cost. Now, are there ways in which the older gen is better? Yes, there genuinely is. First and foremost, that CPU Although it's going to use more raw power to do more demanding tasks, it should be said that on standby and low-level tasks, the older generation device is not going to use as much power. On top of that, 
It's worth highlighting that the older generation device arrives with a remote control, which I know seems nebulous in the extreme. But if you are going to utilize this system with an HDMI out and connecting it to your big TV so you can watch your media at home, click, 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 that is something that remote control allows you to do. Now, these remotes aren't expensive. You can get them for 10, 20 quid, and there's several QNAP versions out there with lots of different features that are to flick between apps and different screens and functions and hotkeys and stuff. There's also a free mobile app that you can install, Q Remote, which has got like mouse capabilities, it's got app functionalities, it's probably the most detailed one of them all. And they both support it as a network remote. But there's still no avoiding that it's nice to have that remote included, particularly if you're buying this specifically to have all of the TV shows and stuff you want to watch, and then maybe unofficially installing something like Kodi or even Plex Media Server to port directly into your TV for low latency of the playback of media files and a remote control to just sit there and watch. There are reasons why the old one's pretty good, and there's a reason why it is still damn popular, because it's architecture they got right so well back in 2015. But I do think it might, you know, be the end for the 451 Plus, which is real shame, and we'll do a big funeral for it. It'll be real sad. But between these two NAS devices, I would urge you all to go for the brand new TS 451D2 because it's not going to blow anyone's socks off, all right? This is not QNAP in their pomp. It's not QNAP doing the best of the best they can do. If you want that at this level, it's the 453D. But if you are choosing between these two at this price point, you've got about 400 nicker knocking around, give or take, without the hard drive money, and you're wondering what to spend it on, and you've narrowed it down to these two, I would argue you are very, very much putting yourself on the back foot and at a handicap going for that older device because the new device has just got that glass ceiling. And I think this one's going to be around for a long time. It's going to be a slow burn because they've released this after a lot of arguably more powerful devices with 2.5 GBE and PCIe upgradability. But I think this NAS is going to be around for a while because although its architecture isn't exactly breathtaking, if they can get that price, I've said it before in other videos, I reckon this price, they can knock a little bit off that. This could be a real contender to be a very underrated system in much in the same way the 451 Plus was when it was released. And ultimately is why I recommend that device overall. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, throw me a like. It helps me know what you guys like and then I can carry on making these. If you want to learn more about this device or other NAS solutions, click subscribe. I'm comparing this against a bunch of other NAS systems because I'm interested to see how it compares with a lot of arguably more powerful systems that have arrived in the last few months. And finally, do visit the link in the description to NASCompareSandSpan.com to get the best NAS solution for you and to stay abreast on the best ways to make the most of a NAS solution while it's in your home or office environment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.